my name is Kelly Cannon, and this is the Salt Lake Tribune Daily Buzz, a video series where we bring you the important story of the day. Now, while many Utahns have been concerned about the potential for flooding from the excessive amount of snow that we received this year, one area is benefiting greatly from this water. Water is gushing from the Weber River runoff and dispersing around the 19,000 acres of wetlands on the shores of the Great Salt Lake. Rich Hansen, the manager of the Ogden Bay Waterfowl Management Area, is happy to see the surge of water. At this time last year, the area was only getting about 60 cubic feet of water per second. Now it's getting 3,870 cubic feet of water per second, or about four times its, the volume of its median flow. Now, this water is being released onto the wetlands so it doesn't end up in people's basements. As the water flows through the wetland areas, it ripples onto the Great Salt Lake, covering the once dry lake beds with water once again. Now, while it's only a few inches deep, it is enough to dampen the source of the toxic dust that has been the focus of the dying lake. Now, while this year's water flow isn't enough to save the Great Salt Lake altogether, it has temporarily paused the ecological disaster. The lake sank to record loads in the past two years, killing nearly all of the brine flies and nearly all of the brine shrimp. However, this year the lake is up 3.5 feet from that record low. Karina Herbert, the, a Utah biologist for Ducks Unlimited, said that the excess water this year has bought Utah a little bit more time to, quote, implement some of these measures that we need to start saving water and reversing the slow trend of the lake declining every year. Now, a major component of restoring the lake's health and resiliency is restoring its wetlands. But the Ogden Bay was so dangerously close to losing its wetlands with the spring runoff. Like most areas, it benefits from the water, but too, but too much can be catastrophic. The Three Mile Levee, which was built in 1937 to create the management area, has long been neglected and left to erode. The earthen structure was originally 21 feet wide, but sections are currently as narrow as seven feet wide. Now, Ducks Unlimited is using part of a $1 million federal North American Wetlands Conservation Act grant to help restore Ogden Bay's levee by hauling in boulders to shore up the structure and return it to its original footprint. Now, aside from using dikes and levees to manage the wetland levels to prevent local flooding, the wetlands also provide a diverse habitat for local plant and wildlife to thrive. The area is especially important to bird populations, providing food and habitat for species that run the risk of becoming endangered. Now, having healthy wetlands also improves the water quality for the lake and helps recharge the groundwater. To learn more about the importance of these wetlands near the Great Salt Lake, be sure to read Leah Larson's article that we've linked below. Now, we want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the wetlands near the Great Salt Lake? Do you have any memories of being at the wetlands or seeing birds or watching the bird migrations at the wetlands? Comment below or you can tweet us at SLTrib. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. If you want all of our Daily Buzz videos and basically all of our videos as soon as they are live, be sure that you're subscribed. You can also find us on social media, including TikTok, Instagram, and uh, Twitter uh, at SLTrib. Thanks. Thanks.